Hello. Welcome to Bell & Pollock. Our law firm is Bell & Pollock. We are injury attorneys. I'm Gary Bell, along with Brad Pollock. And today we're talking about workers' compensation. And today we're talking about third-party liability. So let's, let, let's lay the groundwork and the framework for this. You're injured on the job. Maybe you're a salesperson doing a sales call. Maybe you're a delivery person doing a delivery. Maybe you're a, a dock worker and you're hit by a truck in the, in the loading area that's not connected to your company but with a third-party XYZ company. That, that's the definition of third-party liability. So, Brad, what's the basic, uh, basic point we want to make with everybody that if you have a third-party liability situation and a workers' compensation situation, lots of rules and regulations? There's going to be a lot. The, you know, the, the two of them work together, but a lot of times work against each other also. Sometimes they're going to be favorable to you. Sometimes they're not in different areas. You've got to understand what the differences are. It's really important that you sit down with a professional who understands the differences and can talk to you about what's pro and what's con in each system and how one system may affect your recovery in the other. Right, exactly. So, you know, let's use a numerical example uh, real quick. Let's say you're injured on the job and you have a third-party liability situation, meaning a third person outside your company uh, hits you like in a car, you were on a delivery uh, route, you were on the job, and somebody T-boned you or rear-ended you. So you can go through the work comp system and or you can go through the third-party liability civil justice system to make a claim against the insurance company for the at-fault party. And those two work together. Uh, but let's say you have $30,000 of medical bills, Brad, uh, in the work comp, paid by work comp, you pay, you filed a work comp claim. Let's say you have $10,000 of lost wages. So that's $40,000. Work comp is paid out. And now you've recovered, you, you and your attorney have recovered $100,000 from the person who hit you. And so now work comp wants their $30,000 back. They want their $10,000 of lost wages uh, back. And what do they do for it? How does that work? Well, uh, work comp has, first of all, the first right to proceed against that money and to get it and just collect it directly. You, uh, you obviously, and most of the time, work comp goes ahead and lets you do that. But then once you get the money, you've got to start negotiating with work comp as to whether or not you can get them to take less and what kind of rights they're going to exercise to get the money. Right, exactly. So in that example, uh, you had to hire the attorney. You had to go get the $100,000. Work comp paid the 30000 Work comp paid the 10000 What did they do? What did they do to collect the money? Now they want money back. Are there any remedies that you have. You get the $100,000 and you say, well, wait a minute, I don't want to pay the full $40,000 back. They didn't do anything. I did it. My attorneys did it. They, did, they just sat there and waited until we did the work and, re, and recovered the money. So, Brad, is there any way that uh, good lawyers can approach workers' comp and try to negotiate with them so they don't get paid back the $40,000? Maybe something less. Well, sure. And a good lawyer should be negotiating and trying to work that out. A good lawyer should be talking to the work comp system every step of the way. You got to find out who the work comp lawyers are, who they, who who the person is, is going to make that decision as to what kind of money they'll they'll take, what kind of break they'll give you, how much they'll reduce the claim they've got, and you you should be talking to them at all times to to make sure that you're you're maximizing the recovery for your client. Right, you can't go this uh, this process alone. It's very complicated. We've said before, workers comp has not hundreds but thousands of rules, regulations, and statutes controlling you. Uh, and if you make a claim against a third party, the person in the car who hits you, uh, that's why they're called third party. They're outside. They don't work in your same company. And so it's a third party situation. You hired the attorney. You went after the money. And so you can try to negotiate with workers' compensation because they did they did nothing on the third party claim but sit there and wait to get, get, get paid back. Now, uh, let's talk about an apportionment issue. Uh, let's say you were injured on the job, um, a low back injury five years ago, and you had now you've got a low back injury on this job. Maybe it was a different job five years ago. Now you've got a low back injury, same body part. That's very important. So the rule in work comp is that you they have the right to subtract out your previous MM, uh, permanent impairment rating. For example, if you were given a 5% permanent whole person rating in your back injury five years ago, and now you've got the same body part injured and you get 11% rating with a few exceptions. They can subtract out the 5% that you previously got from your 11%. But that rule changes, Brad, if you make a third-party claim against the, like the, car, the person driving the car who hit you. It might. It, it might very well change because now the, 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 there are certain doctrines that apply different in a third-party claim concerning aggravation of a pre-existing condition, whether or not they have to prove it versus whether you prove it. 
it's funny about defense lawyers because normally in a regular third-party claim, if you start wanting to talk about impairment ratings that, from that accident that, that, that's at issue, they don't ever want that in evidence, and they've and the courts won't allow it. But by gosh, if they've got an impairment rating from a prior accident, they want to bring it in right away. Right, and they want to subtract it and reduce your benefits, okay? So Bell and Pollock, we've got Gary Bell, Brad Pollock. We've got over 30 years of experience. Uh, we've developed a legal game plan that's tailored to you, your case, your injuries, your needs, your damages. It's your own personal injury legal blueprint. You get it for free at Bell & Pollock with a free initial consultation. You understand what your rights are. You understand what to do. You understand what the insurance company is going to try to do to you or insurance companies. You understand in this situation what the work comp insurance company is going to try to do to you, what the third-party liability insurance company is going to try to do, and what you need to do. The Bell and Pollock Legal Game Plan. You can call us, go to our website, championsofthepeople.com. It's information loaded. It's there for you. Welcome to Bell and Pollock. Next week.